Good morning on Thursday, February 23rd. We have a very special edition of the 359 Podcast, episode 184. And joining us today is Alfred Ng, Ben Fox Rubin, and Sharon Profis. Welcome to the hey, show. Hey, Sharon. Hey, thank you for having me. Glad to have you. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Alfred, you're steering the ship today. Yep, and uh, Mobile World Congress, here we come. Uh, big news coming out of Barcelona next week. Lots of phones. Uh, Sharon will actually be going there. Um, so she'll be here to tell us all about, um, you know, what kind of phones you can expect and what kind of phony news is coming out of there. Yeah. Walk, walk, walk. Aww. And on top of that, we're also going to be talking about all sorts of cooking tech because Sharon's been focusing a lot on that recently. We've been doing some really cool videos called Counter Space. So check those out on CNET and also YouTube if you like. Yes. And we'll get to all that stuff. I'm already hungry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I should have had breakfast before this show. <laughs> I never have breakfast before this show. <laughs> That's a problem. Well, no, that's why, it's, that's why it's so good. <laughs> breakfast is an overrated Why didn't you bring meal. any gadgets so that we could Wait, make some? Are you doing intermittent fasting? What is that? Oh. I don't. I just know I'm doing. I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> the original intermittent fasting. <laughs> it's where you only eat between like twelve and eight. That's that's kind of what I do. I mean, already. that's already what there I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's, let's get to, let's get this party rolling. Let's folks. get to Man Bun World Congress. Man Bun World Congress, <laughs> baby. All right, we'll be back to join you in the chat. Hit us with your uh, questions and comments about that and other things, and we'll see you in exactly three minutes and 59 seconds from three, two, one. Welcome to the 359, where we talk about, about the top tech news of the day and all the other crap we want to throw in. I'm Alfred Ng. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. And I'm Sharon Profis. Sharon is joining us all the way from San Francisco as she gets ready to head out to Mobile World Congress next week. It's going to be the Royal Rumble of phones with all-stars like LG, Nokia, and BlackBerry battling to be the top device next week. Uh, Samsung actually decided to save its Galaxy S8 for a separate event, uh, which is kind of making things interesting because now there's a vacuum for top dog. But still, if the Galaxy S8 is not there, why should people care? What I'm kind of sad about related to this is, is that modular phones were really interesting last year. And granted, they didn't take off. They were kind of a failure, particularly the LG G5. I think, what is it, the Moto? There's the Moto Z was also a modular phone. But we're probably going to see a lot of like more of the same phones, don't you think? Oh, yeah. We're going to see a lot more unibody phones, phones that don't let you replace the battery. And we may even see fewer phones that let you have an SD card slot. There... It was interesting. Last year, there were a lot of modular phones, like you said, and I think that a lot of companies were just trying to do something interesting and different. Yeah. And it turns out that people don't really want that. Yeah, they basically want some version of, you know, whatever those flagship phones are, even if they're a little bit cheaper. You know, you've got like this slim body iPhone or the S8. And I mean, yeah, people don't want to mess with that design. I, I, I remember seeing the modular phones. It just seemed like too much work. I Like, I yeah. want to <laughs> buy something and then ha it's like, imagine going to a restaurant where they're like, all right, you cook the food. Like, it's just <laughs> <laughs> And there's more stuff to lose too. Uh, one thing though that could be interesting is Nokia might be coming back with like a candy bar phone. I'm so excited for that. What, I, what's it going to look like? Is it going to be like a smartphone or is it going to be like a dumb phone with more features? I, I want it to look exactly like the one I had in middle school. <laughs> Yeah, I just want like to do the exact same stuff. Yeah. No LTE. Just 2G. play Snake Game. Yeah. That's yeah. just that, that's all it does. You know, I don't I don't have to be on a 24-hour news cycle anymore. I can ignore emails. Yeah. Right. On that, it's, oh, sorry, my phone wasn't connected. <laughs> oh my god, this actually yeah. sounds like the perfect phone. Yeah. I but really hope they do this. I mean, all these companies that are banking on nostalgia at, at MWC, like why? What is that actually a selling factor or I think it could be. I think that there is a lot of competition. We found ourselves in a market where there are two um, main phone makers and everybody else is kind of just like trying to grasp at something that they think consumers will like. And nostalgia, especially in the past year, think about Pokemon Go, has been a big selling point. So maybe something like a candy bar mm -hmm. phone will help set them apart. Now, jumping away from uh, Mobile World Congress, I understand, Sharon, that you are a cooking tech connoisseur. I am neither a cooking or a tech connoisseur. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> if you can tell me, you know, will having devices actually make me suck less at cooking? Yeah, so uh, that's that was one of the focuses of Counterspace is there are more and more devices that kind of bridge the gap between people who suck at cooking but still want to cook at home, don't want to spend all their money in restaurants. So, for example, there's the Pantelligent Pan that connects to an app and gives you step-by-step -step instructions based on the sensors in the pan. So it knows if you're burning your salmon, for example, and will tell you to flip it over. 
Right. That sounds helpful, but it's $130 for a pan. I, I, I don't really see myself like spending that kind of money on something like that. That's true. And right now I see it as more of a gift. So put that on your gift list. Um, <laughs> okay. But it's still too expensive, like you said, right? So it's still the early days of the smart kitchen. And we will eventually see that price go down where components like Bluetooth might be a standard in smart kitchen devices. Does that mean I'm going to have to like charge my frying pan? <laughs> Yes. No, but and it's going to be maybe. horrible. Yeah. <laughs> what about, um, I, I want to get really quickly to a multi cooker. Do you think people are going to buy multi cookers? Oh, yeah. I think the multi cooker is probably the new version of the slow cooker. So it's a pressure cooker, slow cooker, sous vide machine, yogurt maker, oatmeal maker, all in one. Good God. Yes. <laughs> and well, it makes cooking easy. Well, if you want to read more about these, check us out at CNET. I'm Alfred Ng. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. And I'm Sharon Profis. And welcome back. Best comment in the chat so far, Sharon's the best. <laughs> oh, oh, very you nice. Guys. We've done 184 episodes and no one said that about any of you guys. <laughs> For good reason. For good reason. Because mean, we you know, are not the best. There can only be one best. The YouTube sure. commenters are always right. It's and- true. Sharon is the best. And thank you for joining us. By of the course. Way. Yeah. So. All the way from SF. You guys, three minutes and 59 seconds is like crazy fast. Nothing. Yeah. We were just complaining about that yesterday. We should never have gone. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, it's that time always, lock. Um, inviting Scott Stein on the show is usually a problem because oh, yeah. he can talk and he knows a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes. And three minutes and 59 seconds is not enough time for him to just. Um, whatever, get whatever is in his brain yep. out into the microphone uh, <laughs> to explain things about VR, or different things like that. Fun fact, before I got hired um, and I was doing research on the 359, at first I thought it was a podcast that came out at 3.59 o'clock. Oh that would have been much easier. We should, like, just, we should, we should just do that now. Like, <laughs> that's what we meant all along. This They're is like, the way the, the internet afternoon works. Podcast. <laughs> people, people want things fast. If you want like the slow cooked version, you can be yeah. on like the YouTube thing. That's what we're here for. So yeah. yeah. Apologies to our neighbors, Giant Bomb, who are apparently having a ball right now. You can probably hear them in the background. <laughs> right. Yeah. They have... Maybe we should make extremely loud noises, too. We're also having fun here yeah. on our podcast. <laughs> We're having more fun than you. If you guys uh, cross-subscribe to the Giant Bomb podcast, look for us uh, screaming in the background someday. Right. Hey, <laughs> Jacob in the chat has a good question. Do you guys think innovation for mobile is dead? It's been a very long time since there has been a feature that has really been that exciting. And I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who could totally. contest that notion, but he's got a valid point. We, we have been struggling, especially with people like Apple. We're like, what are you guys doing? We've, Everyone, we've definitely talked about that on the podcast, yeah, we, and that's that's a very well-noted comment. We've answered this, like, multiple times, but the thing, uh, just because something is slow doesn't mean it, that it's dead. It can't be you know? dead. I mean, it's, it's not absurd. like mobile phones are going away. Yeah. No, Somebody's but he's talking about innovation. Idea. Right. Is the innovation of the phone dead. Somebody yeah. will have a Newton moment sometime in the near future, I would expect. Well, I think that, right, for a long time... There, you could easily tackle innovation. Jeez, I know, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> keep it down over there. <laughs> Get the broom to knock. <laughs> it's like having siblings next door. Um, I think that for a long time, innovation just meant that the next year, the the specs on the phone would be a whole lot better, uh, and that is actually very easy to accomplish. We now know, um, and so. The next thing it seems is basically innovating around your own ecosystem. Which, right. I mean, it's. I think it's frustrating for a lot of people because you get things like a lack of a headphone jack where it's like, oh, surprise, we now have a new Bluetooth chip yeah. that solves that problem that we created. And now you need to buy the AirPods. And now I, you need I, to spend more money. Right. Yeah. Right. I still never thought headphone jacks were a problem. I My argument with this is that it's possible that innovation with the phone may never come back while tech companies go and move into new and different directions relating to software, mm-hmm. like you mentioned with ecosystems, things like that. I've been writing a lot about voice assistants and AI. And it'll be interesting to see how those power the phone. And like that's where the innovation is going to be, where it starts to predict what you need more often, different things like that. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, wow. It's, it's very hard to maintain a thud while I'm hearing yelling in the background. So I'm going to stop right now. I want to know what they're playing today. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, iPhone 8 or Samsung S8, what do you think is going to be the best buy? And that's from Andrew. Oh, what? what's the Boy, best buy? Gun to what your head. What does that head. mean, guys? Uh, Android versus coming, iPhone. What's coming to the Best Buy showroom? Right. <laughs> right, right. I mean, like, you're basically... That's that's almost a troll comment trying to like get us in trouble. Yeah, yes. which which, which uh, ecosystem we, we like. have to say impartial. 
We are impartial, however. I am certainly very curious to see what the newest iPhone is going to be because it's going to be the 10-year anniversary. Yeah, I really Nothing wrong with being curious. I really can't make that call until I've seen both those phones. That's kind of a weird question to ask. I think, yeah. I no, think but like, there's a lot of anticipation for both. So it's, it's, it's a good question. It, yeah. Exactly. They're both like iPhone has completely slumped in their innovation. Samsung just had the controversy. Huge problem. They're both really under the microscope right now. So this will be a good race, I think. That yeah, is, yeah. I totally And the people who win you. are the consumers. Right, right. <laughs> Capitalism. Well, yeah, a lot of people are speculating that iPhone's going to go, you know, all out on the 8 because it's their 10th anniversary on this one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what would we say? iPhone X. Yeah. What, 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 the, what were the terrible names you came up with? Uh, I think mostly just X. <laughs> X. X is good. They might, iPhone they might, 10. They might pull a Windows and just skip right from uh, 7 to 10. <laughs> yes. Right. But, but, like, seriously, we were talking about this on the podcast, and, like, do we really think that, like, one of these other phone makers is going to break through? Like, do you really think that, like, LG is going to go very traditional unibody with the G6? Yep. Sharon, do you think that, like, this is going to be LG's year? Probably not, right? Probably Samsung and not. Apple are still going to win it out. I think we're in a place where not the best LG can do, but the most likely scenario in my mind is that LG is able to keep its stake in the market. Like, I, yeah. not let that piece of the pie shrink more than it has. So, I, but as far as, like, oh, LG is the new Samsung, I think that will or take no, a while. no. Yeah, that's not gonna. And I really liked how they were experimenting. That was yeah. a great way to try to win market share, but it didn't work. You know, people did not want modular phones, and good for them for trying something different. And sometimes it just doesn't work. It was a good idea on paper for sure. I would have liked to play with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think at this point the the real race is to see who can have the best phone at its like cheapest value. Only because it's you know a lot of people don't want to shell out all that money for Samsung's phone or you know Apple's phone, but they still want like a top quality phone. I know like. The cost is like the first thing I look for when I'm like shopping for a well, new phone. And that will, that's what was so disappointing about the Pixel was that I mm -hmm. think people were expecting that perfect, you know, high quality phone at a decent price, cheaper than iPhone or Samsung phones. Yep. And Amazon we didn't fire. get that. Amazon yeah. Fire all oh, over geez. again to a certain extent. The yeah. Fire was Well, this a phone is actually failure. good. Yeah. You know, Amazon's yeah. done a lot of things right, and the mobile phone was not necessary. Right. But people were expecting I guess I mentioned it because people expected a lower price point. But yeah, yeah the Google Pixel is clearly a much better phone than the, the Fire phone. Yeah. That one still got my attention for my next upgrade. Mm -hmm. As of now, we'll see. I After personally love that phone. I think, mm -hmm. you know, if you want the latest Android software and a phone that kind of looks like the iPhone, <laughs> then um, then it's a great choice. I mean, and then we also have Huawei, which is probably the most likely company to release a premium phone at a lower price, which we'll see up. Yeah. Hopefully Mobile World too. Brent in the chat is a man after my own heart. The next innovation has to be around batteries or charging low battery levels cause many people anxiety. He ain't lying. We actually just did. Ayaz put up a great uh, countdown, the top five of the best batteries. And what was it? The Moto... Oh shoot! Help me here. Probably G or one of the one of the, one it, of the was, motor, it was a Moto, Moto X. Yeah, I forgot. I'm gonna have to check with him. Sorry, everybody. I'm not well rehearsed enough in my own content. Okay, uh, blame the they had like people. 23 hours or something like that. Oh, yeah, which is which is really impressive. Like, I think if oh, how 23 hours. How much use though? Like right. Like that's at a standard. That, that, uh, that's a <laughs> in a uh, like a, a standard. I don't know. Whatever our testings, um, the circumstances were. I'm yeah. not even sure who did that one. So. I would be interested to see if, like, let's say, like, there's a big iPhone event. Tim Cook is standing up on stage, and he claims that, like, the iPhone is going to last for two days. I think people's heads would explode, yeah. like, in the theater. They would just be like, that's amazing. Like, for the, for so the, I agree with Brent. That's that's a good innovation if the, it were to happen. For the record, uh, in that Top 5 episode, people were contesting, where's the iPhone? Where's the iPhone 7? My iPhone 7 lasted for, like, 60 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got mad, and he went and did research, so he's texting me, iPhone 7 Plus, 12 hours, 6 minutes. Right. Just to prove him wrong. Yes. Well, that was that was the one of the most disappointing things about the last iPhone announcement was that there was no improvement in battery life. Yeah, among, no. among other things among, that were well, disappointing. Touché. Yeah, I, I, touché. Agree, I agree with Brent here. I mean, I think that's why everyone has all that nostalgia for the Nokia, like, because it lived forever. They're yeah, still on the, today. You could throw it across the bottom of a reservoir and they're still active. <laughs> Yeah, but the battery life on those were incredible. I remember charging mine like what, like once a month. Right, because it's almost like an e-reader. Sounds yeah. like doesn't you didn't use spend enough time in high school playing Snake when the teacher wasn't looking because mine lasted a few days. 
it's, it's Either, pretty awesome. Even still, a few days is incredible. So, like, oh, by compared to today, yeah, yeah, um, it's become so normal that you have to carry around extra power and chargers with you. It's like a Always. It's, it's a, a I, renaissance for battery manufacturers, like mobile battery manufacturers. I, I have four. to carry a, an extra battery around. It's just like that's not the point of me having a phone. Well, it's, if I'm abandoned in the middle of the street, looks like I'm I'm screwed. You know what? I just for that just have two phones. Duh, come on. Yeah, just have two <laughs> phones. Just have two phones. What's the what's wrong with and that? And again, the manufacturers have played you well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> played you like a violin. So I have I have an Android phone and my iPhone, so you know, I I love both my kids equally. Right. But you're not the kind of guy who leaves that Android off until the iPhone dies. You're screwing with both of them all day. There is, so there, it defeats the purpose. <laughs> Oh my god! I tell me I'm wrong. Sometimes. Have the giant bomb guys died? What happened I, to them? I'm, I'm starting to I'm get a worried. Concerned. Vinny, I'm a little worried. are you okay? Vinny, Vinny, <laughs> scream loudly at the TV if you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, before we wrap it up, Joshua wants to know: Has anyone used the new BlackBerry DTEC 50? He says it's ridiculously no. cheap on Amazon. We haven't got it. The if Roger were here, Roger is getting ready to go to a Mobile World Congress, and he is one of our many awesome mobile experts and i'm sure he's yeah. had his hands on it have you tried it sharon nope yeah. i haven't touched a blackberry since yeah i was, I was gonna say considering ago. it is not 2007 i have not used a blackberry yeah i mean like i i'm more excited for the nokia phone because it's gonna be an awesome throwback but it, i don't know maybe blackberry is gonna come out with something interesting too people love the qwerty keyboard man they yep. want. They gotta stick with that. I mean, keyboard. to be fair, I had a like really outdated uh, Samsung phone that had the keyboard on it. Um, maybe up until like 2013, like because it was just like I wanted that keyboard so bad. The best feature of it was being able to like text people without like looking down at yes. your phone. Yes. Right. Yeah. I would cross the street and just like do that though. It was. Time. It was. Another... There's an innovation. How to bring back tactile response even if you don't have a physical keyboard. It's getting there. They're getting yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. That'll happen. That's that's in process with. Um, haptic with haptic feedback engines so it's it's not as uh exact as you would want it to be for a keyboard but that is something that that would be comforting on that's the, yeah. i think that's a word for it is comforting you, but then by that point we'll all be dictating everything that's oh. true well, yeah, <laughs> that. and also like you know dict like speech to text technology is getting a lot better i'm wondering true. if like there's gonna be a lot of like alexa at play on all these phones oh yeah yeah I mean, the Alexa. Huawei, the yeah, death Huawei of the touchscreen. Sorry, yeah. Huawei is is adding Alexa into one of its phones. So yeah, that's there at least go. one of them. All right. Well, I think that's probably a pretty good place to leave it off for the day. Yeah. Vinny's alive. Vinny is <laughs> Thank alive. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Justice for Vinny. All right, let's wrap it up, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching again. And if you liked what you saw, the 359 podcast is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, FeedBurner, Google Play Music. I think CNET.com too. Of, you can, yes, you can see of it course it's on CNET.com. <laughs> Check it out watching. there too. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you. See you guys next week. <laughs>